that um, that uh, that that's happened through John the Baptist and Jesus again. My phone's telling me it's going to cut me and do another do another thing. So I'll just carry on. Um, so so this this passage is from Luke chapter one, and um, so when John the Baptist was born, his father had been muted, and then he was suddenly able to speak after he said his name would be John. And and it says here his, in verse 67 of Luke 1, And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us and accomplished redemption for his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of David his servant, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show mercy toward our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to Abraham our fathers. This is the verse that the Lord wanted me to really share. To grant us that we, being rescued from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And so this is the key thing here, to grant us that we being rescued from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days and then he, it goes on and I, I won't read the rest but good verses but the point there is that there is a time coming for the church during which the world is saved and I've seen this prophetically myself where we will serve him without fear. And that is what the Joshua generation will experience. The Joshua generation will experience that verse, verse 74, to grant us, the Joshua generation, that we, being rescued from the hand of our enemies, that's Jezebel, and that's all the other demons that have been rife in the church, in, in us, might serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And that's the future of us, the church. Without fear, no matter even right at the very end when the Antichrist shows up after the salvation of the world, after everyone's been saved, after there's people born who are not saved, after enough of them have been born to organize themselves together against the Lord, basically, and to do what the Antichrist has to do, even right to the very end when Jesus shows up and takes us up there to the, you know, with him and the angels, with him riding on his white horse, and we get changed, and we get brought back down again here, and, you know, he starts reigning. Even in the presence of the Antichrist, even as we're protected, as it were, in the wilderness, as I think it's uh, Revelation 12 says, even during that time we're going to, verse 74, we're going to be rescued from the hand of our enemies, we're going to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And in a nutshell, these two verses, I believe, are the mandate for the Joshua generation. This shows us, Ephesians 5, is it? About the, I might be getting this wrong, it might not be Ephesians 5. Is it? Is Ephesians 5 the blameless, the church being blameless and spotless and without spot or blemish? Um, Ephesians 4 is it or 3 I'm not good at this so I'm just going to share scriptures here and if I've got the references wrong I've got them wrong I'm sorry about that um, but remember there was a point he said until we all come to the fullness in the head we grow up into the head until we're all made into the fullness of the stature of Christ so this is the future of the Joshua generation that we're going to serve him without fear all the days of his life um, and holiness and righteousness before him, having been rescued from the hand of our enemies, we are going to experience the verse where Jesus said, is it, that he gives his spirit without measure. Fullness in the Holy Spirit means that we're going to do the greater things that Jesus spoke of. So for us, we're going to live in this place of faith. And I think in the last year I talked about being in the blue and I said I had this experience. We are literally, as the church that remains, we are literally going to live in the Holy Spirit, in that place of submission, because he's going to bring us to that. We're not going to do it ourselves. He's going to bring us to that place. I'm trying to show submission here. 
we're gonna he's gonna bring us to that place where we're submitted to him everything is like in our open hands and we're saying here we are god here we are we're yours we're yours we're yours here we are we're not pretending to be perfect we're not trying to make ourselves perfect we're under the blood we're under your authority we only want to do what you want us to do here we are lord do what you want with us and he's going to take us up on that <laughs> he's actually going to to literally take us up on that and he's going to say thank you very much um andrew thank you very much um you know amy thank you very much ginger thank you very much heather thank you very much randy regina and anyone else who's listening to this he's going to take us up on this all around the world he's going to take us up on this and he is literally going to live through us he's going to restore us he's going to heal us he's going to uh, give us all his wisdom all these gifts that we're going to need He's going to live through us. He's going to give us his peace. He's going to give us his rest. He's going to give us his wholeness. He's going to give us all the money, the wealth that we need to do his things. Not not our things, but his things. He's going to give us the ability to be a blessing to others. He's going to bless us so that we can be a blessing. We're going to experience his miracles. We're going to see amazing supernatural healings. We are. We are going to see that. We're going, to be, we're going to be able to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. We're going to experience all these things because this is his plan for this generation to experience the fullness of his Holy Spirit so that we'll be filled up in all things into him who's the head. The body will have attained to the fullness of the stature of Christ. I'm pretty sure that's the verse that I'm trying to think of. I'm not sure which chapter in Ephesians that's from. But that's the plan and we're going to be to, to the very end and towards the very end we're going to be perfected to a degree that we are without blot without stain without blemish and we're not going to do this the holy spirit in us he's going to do it so the joshua generation is all about salvation um jesus you know is salvation the, the lord is salvation you know that that's that that's my feeling it's all about salvation and so evangelism is going to be incredibly important and um, faith is going to be incredibly important and there is no place for fear and i just want to share a little bit about this now because fear as i said at the beginning fear has has been an issue for me so the way that i've found works for me and has worked for me and has been working for me in terms of overcoming fear it's just to be brutally honest with God. So so if anything happens to me and I have a tinge or a spike or a barb of fear that hits me and I feel afraid, I just tell God that I'm afraid. I just say, I'm afraid, God. I, I feel afraid. I give it to you. So immediately I'm just giving that to God. I'm not trying to overcome it. I'm not trying to say, oh, no, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to be courageous. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not doing that. I'm just saying, yeah, I'm afraid. I'm just being honest, so I'm just being transparent with God, just being honest, and I'm just saying, yes, I'm, I'm afraid, I feel afraid. And then I'm basically offering the Holy Spirit an opportunity, I'm saying, well, you know, hey, you know how this is going to pan out if you don't help me. If you don't help me, I'm going to be afraid, that's the way it's going to be. I'm basically admitting defeat, and I'm giving him an opportunity, and I'm basically saying, Lord Holy Spirit, you, you live through me. Now... Does he always live through me like instantaneously and immediately when I pray that? I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say no. That hasn't always been my experience. But as I wait in that place, if I don't get annoyed or frustrated or whatever, if I just wait in that place, then eventually I find him coming through very naturally. I'm not shouting at the devil. I'm not you know, screaming or trying to make myself believe that I'm not afraid. I just feel naturally he comes through if I wait long enough and and he actually overcomes. So he is my overcomer. He overcomes fear in me. So I've found peace with respect to the Joshua 1 scriptures where he keeps saying, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be you know dismayed or whatever he says in those scriptures. I've found peace in my own heart to know that he is the one who isn't afraid. <laughs> now, if we just think about this for a minute, and I don't know when my phone's going to cut me off on this, but if when it cuts me off, it cuts me off, okay? So I'm just going to keep talking until he either says it's enough or the phone cuts me off. Um, but but basically, when when we think about this, the Holy Spirit isn't afraid of anyone. 
is he? Like, what can anyone do to him? <laughs> there's, there's a scripture where God basically says, if anyone speaks a word against the Holy Spirit, they will never be forgiven. Seriously, so it's like, really, like, is the Holy Spirit afraid? <laughs> Seriously, like, no. And just to be clear, we can't do that because our new spirit is one spirit with the Holy Spirit and sin within me doesn't count. So if sin within me is trying to mouth off at the Holy Spirit, we don't count. We died. Remember that last sharing? I'm so strong on this. Scripture says, you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. We're given a new spirit, which is one spirit. It says that in Corinthians, First Corinthians somewhere. He joins himself to the Lord as one spirit with him. So it's impossible for a new spirit. No one speaking by the spirit says Jesus is accursed. No one says that. So it's impossible for us to commit that sin, that blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But for, for anyone who does want to do that, they're in for the high jump. So just let's just be encouraged by that. Let's take the other side to that verse and be encouraged and say, the Holy Spirit isn't afraid of anyone because he knows what's going to happen to them if they have a crack at him. Okay, and then who, so who is it who's living through us? It's the Holy Spirit living through us. So the Holy Spirit living through us is the one who does everything through us. So if he's living through us, if he is in a certain area of our lives, and it is very much area by area, and it is very much like the layers of an onion, it's not like we wake up one day and we're free from fear. I can say that quite honestly. It's been a progressive thing where the Lord is just, you know, just like this, just very much step by step, just slowly, slowly but surely, He is just like chipping, 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 chipping away at fear, and that's fine. That's I'm perfectly happy with that. And if if someone has a testimony where they go from zero to hero overnight, I'm very happy for them. But that isn't my experience. <laughs> so. Um, and so, and so he's chipping away at fear. He's the one who's doing the living. I've lost my train of thought here again. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So we can be confident. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. So we can be confident that anything we need is going to be given to us along the way. Any uh, increase in faith is going to be given to us. I, I see faith and fear as basically the opposites. And so if if the Lord is... Uh, increasing our faith, then our, I, I see our fear diminishing. So I see faith growing, and I see the fear diminishing. And that's very encouraging. And so it's not a negative focus on the fear, it's a positive focus on the faith. And to me, the thing that really increases our faith is to actually tangibly experience the love of God. It isn't us trying to read the Bible and believe it, we do read the Bible, by the, by the way. We, we read the Bible because we want to. I want to really stress that as long as my phone gives me time. We read the Bible because we want to read the Bible. We don't read the Bible because we have to read the Bible. We read the Bible when we feel led to read the Bible and when we want to read the Bible. And, and as we read the Bible, we learn about the love of God. As we live... Our practical everyday lives and do our work or do whatever we do as the Holy Spirit lives through us we also learn about the love of God so we learn about the love of God not just through reading the Bible but also through living so there's this nice balance in us where we see demonstrated in us through us living the love of God to others and then in the Bible we're getting that uh, check and balance to see is what we're experiencing of the Holy Spirit doing through us the same as what the Bible says it is? And if that's the case, then there's this nice agreement. And in that place of agreement, we have great confidence. So, so, But the thing that grows our faith is living in and experiencing the love of God. And that grows our faith because what is faith? Faith is trust. So the Joshua generation is a generation of faith. It's a generation that will trust God with our lives that will trust God to do the living through us trust God for the supernatural trust God to provide for our physical needs supernaturally trust God to transport us from this place to the other as he did with Philip was it 
The Holy Spirit just picked him up and took him somewhere else to trust God, to raise people from the dead, to trust God to cast out demons, to trust God to say to a mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, to trust God to do all these things that are totally impossible for us to do, but as led by him, not on some glory trip where we're trying to trust God and be heroes, but as led by him, to trust him, to do what he says, to pray what he says, to proclaim what he says, to pronounce what he says, to decree what he says, and to believe it is done. And again, we can't do any of this, but he can. And as we get to know his love, as we get to know his voice, as we get to know that we're hearing from him, and we see him maybe in small things, and then slightly bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger, and bigger we get to the point where we're able to walk in that place of faith, and like it says in, about Joshua, he said, Sons stand still over Ai. I'm pretty sure it was, Sons stand still over Ai. It might have been some other place. I might have got the wrong place. I think it was Ai. He says this, and it says, in the book of Joshua, it says, God listened to a man. How incredible is that? And God gave them great victory over their enemies. Because Joshua, I believe, was filled with the Holy Spirit at that point. He had surrendered to Jesus, the captain of the host. And I believe that Jesus, through Joshua, Jesus actually gave that command. Son stands still over AI. And God listened to a man. He listened to a man who was filled with the Holy Spirit. He listened to a man who was filled with his own will. God will only listen to us in that place. He won't listen to us when we have a brainy idea of our own. He will listen to us when we are filled with his spirit and we're filled with his will. And that is what we will experience. We will experience that place effortlessly where we are so filled with his spirit and so filled with his will that we speak and things happen. That is the Joshua generation. That is the freedom. That is the deliverance that we will experience. There will be no demons left in the church. There will be no demons left in us. I've seen this and I can say this, there will be none left. The Lord has shown me this, there will be none left. We will be delivered. All of us will be delivered in freedom. As that scripture again, verse 74 says, to grant us that we being rescued from the hand of our enemies, and that's the devil, and that's his works, that the Lord is going to destroy the works of the devil. We'll serve him without fear. We won't be fearing the things in us. We won't be fearing things outside of us. And we're going to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And then he will come after beating that last enemy of death. He will come and collect us from heaven. So the last enemy is death. He will even give us faith, like he said to his disciples, that there are those here who will not taste death till they see the kingdom of he the kingdom of heaven come with power. Kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, I can't remember which one it was. So he's going to do that. He's going to even give us faith to believe that we can live beyond our natural lifespans because he is going to preserve us as a testimony to his own glory. Because that's what it's all about. It's not for us. It's for his glory. We are here for his glory. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he will. Yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And that will be our experience as the Joshua generation, a, transgener a transgenerational movement that will endure till the end and be saved. That is our future. We will fulfill our potential. We'll fulfill every God-given gift that we've been given. We will be presented complete in Christ as Paul wanted. We will be presented complete in Christ on that day that he comes without spot, wrinkle, blemish, any such thing. That is our future. I wanted to encourage us in this. I'm fully aware that my phone might suddenly say, that's enough for you. Uh, so I'm going to stop here. But love to you all. And I pray in Jesus' name that we would believe every word that God has spoken through me tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen.